happy together. Hello everyone and welcome to the Peace and Rap episode of Sunset City. My name is Mike City Santa. Hey Kenderson. And joining me today is the Godfather Costa. The underboss Chris. Soldier Newman. Cochiers. Jack. Justin and uh, I'm sure legend Joshua, Josh, let's start with you, mate. Welcome to your debut. How are you feeling? Thank you. Finally, finally, finally having my debut for this show. It's, you know, a long time coming. You know, Maccas can wait for today. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll now go to the top of the pecking order, Con Farmer. How are you, mate? I'm good. I'm good. I'm cruising. Um, still, still devastated from the the GF, you could, um, yeah, we'll talk later about it. Yeah, we'll yeah. talk later about that. Cochiers, Cochiers, Jackie boy, how are you, mate? Good, mate, good, good. I, um, I kind of share the same thoughts, but you know, with uh, the godfather there, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in a much better place than I was a bit about a week ago, so yeah, yeah we'll talk about it obviously a bit further on, but yeah, all good from uh, from Keith himself. That's that's good. Uh, out of us. Uh, I agree with both Jack and Costa, exactly the same. And uh, uh, Newman? Agreed with everyone, same feelings, getting over you it. must slowly. notice Newman's moustache. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Pretty good. <laughs> close yeah. up, close up. We want to close, close up, up, Newman. Close up. Inch, well done, it's growing an inch. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's no get close the... ups. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this out of the way. We're going to wrap the grand final. Um, I am going to pass it over to the Godfather first, mate. Your thoughts? My thoughts? Can I swear? <laughs> yes. And I know you're a club. You work for the club, Blakey. And I know you can't comment on, on what we're about to deep into. So for anybody who's watching, Blakey's got no part of this. What the effing was happening with the refereeing? Uh, he lost his marbles He's in the back pocket of Sydney I, I don't understand how Chris Beef is, is, um, Has got the, the, the criteria to, to, to ref a grand final It was useless He cost us the game He strictly went out there And that's what I believe He went out there to give Sydney FC The back to back premiership Didn't give a shit about anything else just went out there. It was anti-city throughout from start to finish. That that's the I'm so disappointed. And man, I was I was on Twitter like a maniac. Not one reply back. I knew that stuffed up. But anyway, Jackie boy, what do you reckon? Well, firstly, I, I want to say congratulations to the boys. I mean, they gave us a season that. Uh, um, Without it, it was just an incredible season they gave us, right? Um, you know, so in, in the final, I mean, you can't falter them. They they were spent forced by the by the, uh, the the last minute of the extra time. So they gave it all, and, they, and that's what they promised. They were going to give it all, okay? Um, Christopher James Beath. Mm, what can we say about this guy? Um, I don't want to, I mean, look, if this thing's going to go to players and, you know, and obviously other people, um, disappointed, I want to use the word disgusted. Um, I don't know how this guy's got credentials as a referee. Um, I think I'll probably better leave it there because then the F word stuck coming out, which we don't, I don't really want to say. But, um, but again, just going back to, you know, the grand final itself, um, couldn't be more proud of the boys, you know. Could not have been more proud of the boys. They, they did what they had to do. Uh, they did it. Um, yes, they, you know, we got screwed. But, um, you know, they're heroes. They're, all of them. All of them. They're heroes. So, uh, they gave it all. They gave it all. Chris, your thoughts? Uh, I agree with uh, Costa and Jack. And... VAR, how they could uh, claim that that goal is beyond me, really beyond me. But the boys performed 
beyond their means. We got robbed. We got robbed. We got robbed by, <laughs> by VAR, but the boys played beyond their means. They played way really well. Yeah. It was unbelievable to watch how they were playing that whole game. Yeah, I agree. And also how they matured as a club too. Yeah. yeah. Matured as a team. They're just working well together. And that that was part before COVID, you could question who was the better side, Sydney FC, Melbourne City. You could question it, yeah. But when, when after COVID, when we were allowed to go back to football, we were the we were the best team on the park throughout the whole competition. Uh, yes, we were the best team, and we should have won that. That was ours, and and they took it away from us. You mean they are broken? And I'm so proud of the players. They put in so much effort. We've just been robbed. That's all. And uh, Josh, I know you had a bit of a spoiler on this on your own podcast, but your thoughts? Uh, well, look. Hold I'm, back, son. Don't hold back. <laughs> yeah. No for it. Yeah. On my, own, on my own podcast, we didn't bother discussing it because me and Andrew were very salty. But anyway, on another podcast, uh, I... I did analyze it with another another member of S19 on his podcast as well. He had a point that look the new the new rule I suppose states that if a player is obstructing the goalkeeper's view in an offside position then they don't give it a goal. But the problem is they're just not consistent with this rule. Yes, okay, Wales was in front of Redmayne, right? But it did hit off a Sydney player when it went in. It was just so unlucky that Wales just happened to be right in front of Redmayne, if he was just a little bit more, you know, to the right, the goal's not disallowed. But, you know, overall, the game, we dominated the first 20 minutes, I felt. And then that disallowed goal, um, goal just brought the tempo down a little bit. But after the second half, Sydney came out firing. And, look, we didn't we didn't let them, let's say, uh, we didn't let them attack that easily. It was just like end-to-end, very tight game. And then it just luckily came off Grant's nipple in the 100th minute of extra time. So we have to be the most unluckiest team, I swear. But you can say we got robbed and, and all that, but <laughs> it's, it's very upsetting. It was very upsetting on the day. And I cannot be more prouder of the boys for getting I, it that far. I know that the godfather said beforehand, yes, I went for the club, I can't comment on the referee. But as a former referee myself, the reason that I believe the goal should have stood is you can clearly see Andrew Redmay was looking, was already leaning to the right. And looking, he had two of his defenders in front of him. When the shot was taken, the ball deflects off a Sydney player. So that puts Lucky Wales on side. So technically, he's not obstructing the goalkeeper. Mm. So again, like I can't go into much of it, but I am re- really proud of the boys. And uh, hopefully we get the majority of the squad. Um, with that, we are uh, so again, boys. Congratulations on giving you 110 percent in the grand final. We are very proud of you, and I'm sure the rest of you can agree with that. Yeah. Yes. I agree. So uh, got that out of the way. That that's done. Grand final done. Let's go into our season wrap now. Again. Melbourne City, for the first time since the creation of Melbourne Heart, has qualified for the Asian Champions League, finishing in second place. And uh, we've won with the Golden Boot winner in our side as well, Jamie McLaren. Okay? Highest ever foot points as well in the season under coach Eric Momba. Unfortunately, due to personal reason, Eric has gone home and will not be returning, which brings me to my congratulations to Patrick Estorbo, who takes over as the senior coach of Melbourne City FC. So, boys, I'm going to go one by one again. I'm going to start with you, Josh. How do you think the season was as a fan? Season was probably the best one in our history, to be fair. Like I'd say, you know, finished second, ACL, about, about time, about time. It's one of the, you know, CFG, say, KPIs to... That's one of the KPIs. The objective is to make the Asian Champions League. We finally have. And hopefully it, go, it goes ahead, you know, the next year, which I'm pretty sure it should yeah, be going ahead. It be. Yeah, it should be going ahead. Yeah, overall, I reckon probably one of our 
one of our best squads, one of our best finishers. We made ACL, made the grand final, made the final of the FFA Cup. I know people don't care about FFA Cup as, as much, but still, it's a good achievement. Probably our best season in our history, even from the heart days. Probably the best season we've had, personally. Craig okay, Newman? Agreed, the best season we've had. Asian qualifications, hopefully we make the next step through and make it in there. But a really good season overall. And of us? Yeah, agree with all that. Um, and hopefully we just back it up next year, next season. Jackie boy. Yeah, look, just sort of continuing on what everybody's saying. Like, yeah, it was a fantastic season. I think also one of the things that I picked up from uh, from this year compared to probably all the, all the other years is that um, the club has really grown, um, you know, on the field and also mentally as well. Um, there were a handful of games this year that um, the old Melbourne Heart slash Melbourne City, I reckon, would have lost. Yeah. Instead, you know, we dug in. And the game that, um, you know, like I said, um, you know, I'm still kicking myself that I wasn't there with you guys was the, uh, was the first game against uh, Western United. You know, 10 men, Melbourne City, uh, one all, you know, J-Mac, last couple of minutes, Banks in the winner, thanks for coming, 2-1 up, right? I don't think that the City of Old would have actually won that game. Actually, I thought they would have lost it. But, um, yeah, no, look, lots to take out from this season. Finishing second, like everybody said, uh, hopefully Champions League football next year. Um, two finals, um, Adelaide in the FFA Cup, and obviously uh, the, the Premiership that we just talked about now. But, um, yeah, I just hope that this is now the, the, first, of, the first of many steps to, to success. Okay. Uh, I totally agree there. Uh, Godfather? Look, the boys pretty much summed it up well. Uh, it definitely our best season to date. Um, just a shame that we couldn't walk away with the, with the, with the, with the, with the, with the seat, the dunny seat. Um, very proud of the club. Very proud of the boys. I think, for me, the biggest disappointment for this season, and, and, and look, no, I, I respect and understand Jamo's position in all this. It was just a shame that Jamo couldn't be on the park. That's all. Not that he'd done anything wrong. Not that I don't believe it was warranted. It's just I would have loved to see Jamo on that park because I believe that he would have made a difference in the granny. Because after after we that goal was disallowed, we sort of like went a little bit in our shell. Even though we still dominated, we sort of went a bit, we needed that leader to to bring it up. Yeah, too easy. Uh, I my thoughts on the season, uh, best season we've ever had. Um, best game I believe we had was against West United in the semi final this year. I believe that was one of our best games. Uh, coming, uh, them scoring first, us coming back and winning it. Uh, and uh, I'm very proud of the boys. Um, with that, uh, I want people to, uh, if they can, give me their favourite moment of the season. So we'll start with you, Godfather. Geelong game. Geelong. I reckon the Geelong game was the best game for me this season. It was emotional. I, I, I lost my, my, my nuts a little <laughs> bit. I was pulled up by the, the underboss. Um, this, the whole trip going up there with, with the crew it was awesome. All right. Uh, Jack? Oh, um, really, really, really difficult. Um, I guess if, um, if there was no COVID-19, um, I would have been able to say, you know what? Um, almost every game that I attended at Amy, but because of COVID nineteen, I think you know just the entire season, just the entire season. Because I thought that um, apart from probably the FFA Cup final, um, the boys really gave it gave it all in every game. Uh, there wasn't a, you know there wasn't a game that I believe apart from again the FFA Cup final that. Um, there was a, a hint that the boys were going to give up. So, um, and uh, the fact that um, obviously COVID-19 came and, you know, we weren't able to actually support the boys um, in the last final matches and obviously in the finals as well. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's hard for me to actually pick, uh, pick, 
pick one moment, except for the time that I spent, you know, aiming with you guys and supporting the boys as well. Uh, underboss. Yeah, uh, like I said, the Geelong game, that was the best game. And actually seeing the boys after the FFA, FFA Cup, the final loss, how they would come up in three days. Yeah. And they performed beyond expectations. Newman? The Geelong game as well, different environment, haven't been down there to watch a game at all. And just, it was a really good day and a really good game. Josh? Um, some, some a bit left field. Um, probably our 10th anniversary game against the Mariners where we wore the hot, um, the red and white colours when, you know, perfect moment when Curtis Good scored the goal, of course, our only remaining heart player. Yeah, that probably... I probably, probably, you know, got the heart pumping that game and we got the result in the end. I know it's like it was against Mariners, you know, that's what people say, but it had a lot of meaning this game because obviously I'm a member from the heart days. You know, some left field. That, that's probably the my moment of the season. Again, for me, it was somewhere across field before we were allowed to travel into state again would have to be the last Perth game at actual Perth. Where Florence yeah. scored his first goal, where Judy Edson scored his first goal, and I believe Jamie was also on the, the score sheet. I was actually sitting behind the coach's bench for that game with some of the football staff. So that would have to be what my best moment of the season, uh, being with the boys over in Perth. Is that um, when uh, is that when Glover pulled out like a, one of the best saves yeah. of the season against Bruno? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and we won three two. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah, that's a good. We one. won three two in the end. So, again, that's my favourite moment involving the boys in the season this year. I know we don't really like to be negative, but worst moment of the year besides the grand final. Josh. <laughs> you got you got me there. Um, probably probably uh. Probably the derby, uh, the derby when uh, Toivonen scored a brace when Victory were down. You know, I'm not going to swear, but they were doing really bad. And yeah, they just won that game and it got them going again. But you know, thank God they still finished second last. But that's probably, yeah. Besides that, rest of the season was really good. Newman, FA Cup final. That was a pretty bad night. Uh, I actually don't have one. Don't have one? To be all honest. Not at all. Uh, Concierge. I, um, I'm backing up on uh, with Daniel here. The, uh, the FFA Cup night was, um, was literally a, ho- a horror story. Yeah. You know? Um, so, yeah. Just FFA Cup for me. Costa, go for For me... It was the last home game that we got to see. Not because we we won the game. It was the fact that we knew after that game we weren't going to see our boys live again in front of us. Yeah, yeah. That's for me the worst. And I totally agree with that statement. The, the last home game at Amy Park. Even though we won the game, I knew that I wouldn't be able to go see the boys after that. And I wasn't actually, funny story, I wasn't actually supposed to be at the game as a staff member that day because I was supposed to be working at the F1 for Melbourne City. So I was going to be a fan that day. But again, F1 got cancelled. I had to go in. But they tell me, oh, yeah, our season's going to be pulled on hold. So um, those were our worst moments. It's now time for the... Uh, we don't have stats this week because we're not playing. So not my favourite time of the week anymore. Calculator. Got it wrong, so guess what? The calculator's going to be dead. Um, the best thing I said. No, see, I, see, I, I disagree. I, I disagree entirely there, okay? Um, and maybe if you help me, Blakey, perhaps we could spice the calculator up. But we'll, we talk able, we'll, we'll talk we'll, about that in another a different time. show. But yeah, look, let, let, let's, let's be honest, right? Sydney have got a better head-to-head record against us. Yeah. Okay? So... For me, the, the key factor that swung the game towards us was more in the fact that, one, 
we matched up really well with Sydney FC when we played them. Um, you know, the first match after COVID um, after COVID nineteen. Um, the the second component was that the boys were pumped. You know, the messages we got back. You know, in our Instagram message. You know, the like I said, they were pumped, and so I, I put all 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 those little bits and pieces into the calculator. What I did from the calculator was Chris Beef. That's what I should have put in, right? Yeah. <laughs> because that would have, that would have spun the tide towards Sydney. But um, the calculator was actually quite spot on, really. Because when you think about it, let, 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 let's take it that Dalbridge goals stood. Yeah. And you knew that, and this is the part that we don't know about Melbourne City. Okay, I know that you know we are, we're going to have different you know conversations about it. But would would Melbourne City have set back on a one new lead and go on a counter attack? Right, and do you still think that Sydney would have scored and equalised in the second half? I'll put no. that to you guys. I, I, I'm going to jump in straight away. No, because we're very Mombart. He doesn't like to sit back. He likes to go forward, and I reckon he, they most of the second half would have been played in the Sydney full uh, back half. All right. My um, when I put the uh, details on the, on the calculator, the um, as I said, Sydney uh, were going to score in the first half. Yeah. The Sydney were going to come back in the second half. Yeah. Right? And, it, and that took the game into a penalty shootout. Yeah. Now, when you think about it, we were only a handful of minutes away from, from a penalty. penalty shootout. Yes. But so again, the, I still reckon if that goal had stood, the boys would yeah. have still be fired up. They, yeah. would have, they would have constantly yeah. gone on attack. Yeah. We would have won the game. We and we would, would have won the game. Won the game. Yeah. yeah. I agree with that too. I yeah. think once that goal was taken away from us, <laughs> Um, the, the boys yeah, that went flat. Belief, exactly. Beliefs went down because that was a clear goal. For me, I know what you said, Joshy, and I respect it and all that, but Redmayne went the right way. If yeah. Redmayne went the opposite way, you would have said, so you, could say such, yeah. you know what I mean? As a goalkeeper, when I was playing, you know, you always looked at the football. So he had clear, yeah. right, clear side of the football. You know what yeah. I mean? Now, what was different between that goal and the goal we scored in the FFA Cup when they... Yeah. Was it Timmy Cahill's goal? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What was the difference? Yeah. What we were taught as goalkeepers is to look at the football, all right? Yeah. Yeah, like uh, Atkinson. Was it Atkinson in the way? Lockie. Lockie. Lockie Wiles was in the way, yeah. But he wasn't clearly in the way. Yeah. He still had vision. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was still... And, and like what Blake, you said, he deflected off the, the, the Sydney player. Sydney player, yeah. 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 So that puts that out of, the, out of the question. That was a bad decision. And I think if that goal stood, mate, we would have been talking about a different show today. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. We, will, we will be. Just before we move on, I do want to give a quick shout out to t young Tony, who on the weekend was practicing her barbecue skills. <laughs> Honey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, anyone else got to add anything to that? No. You can add about the barbecue if you want. <laughs> you can add about the barbecue, you can whatever. Now, we do have some players that are coming out of contract at, uh, this season. One of them being Harrison Delbridge, the other being Florian Berenger. We have unfortunately lost Nathaniel Ackerson to West, uh, Perth Glory. And we're possibly going to be losing Lockie Wales as well. Lockie Rumoured to be Western, Lockie Western United. Western United. That's, that's been rumoured for ages. Rumors, been rumoured for ages. That's not me saying Lockie's going. For anyone listening in the world, that's what's been rumoured. Okay. Um, with that, do we want to keep Harrison? Your thoughts? I, I like yeah, Harrison. But he does lack that concentration. And as a defender, you can't have that. Um, I'd like to keep him. But if there's someone better out there that comes up, you'd have to, you'd have to weigh him up as a, as a go. Well, to, to be honest, Gotha, at the moment, if he wants to stay on, he'll be our third choice centre back. Because he's yep. not going to win the club. So, would he want... Yes, Josh? Oh, uh, oh. Uh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, he'll be the third choice. Um, 
if Paddy goes by the same style Eric went after the restart and go with the three centre backs, then keeping Dalbridge will probably be the best option because he's been instilled with that system, if that yeah, makes sense. Yes. You get what I mean? Yeah. So if we keep Dalbridge and keep that three centre backs that we've been going with and we seem to get results and perform pretty well in that system, then maybe, yeah, okay, Atkinson's a massive loss, yeah, but he was replacing Jamo, right? And Jamo's going to be back in. So if we stick with the same system, I think it's quite essential we keep Dalbridge on. Just a thought. Yeah, yeah just a thought. I don't yeah. knock him. I don't knock Dalbridge, but he does have those mental lapses that cost oh, yeah. him games, you know what I mean? And, and yep. what I was saying is, no, don't get rid of him. I'm not saying knock him off and see you later. I'm saying the fact that if someone with a bit of bit, better skill set and a bit of mental attitude and, and, and a better fr- brain, um, how can you say it, uh, better... Better reading blood. of the game. Yeah, yeah. thinking of the yeah. game. It right doesn't yeah. do those little little fade outs. It might be an option to chase someone a little bit better. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, do you know do you know what could fix the mentality side of things like you just said, Paddy Kisnova, because he was a centre back, he did captain the club. Yeah, but Paddy Kisnova could, was could, there all last season. Yeah, yeah, he could really guide him. I'm just yeah. saying, like, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, he could really guide him. Look, I love him. Uh, and, and the year that he was with um uh, the guy that went to Bartonay Gorse. Um, Bart. Bart. Bart, Bart Shanker. Shanker. Yeah. Shanker. The year he was with Bart, they were the best two backs in the competition. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, he's got it, but yeah, that's, that's the only thing that scares me with Delbridge. And, I don't Jack, that, and I'm not, not rating him. I rate him. <laughs> yeah. Jack Newman, Chris, you got anything to add to that? No. Uh, nah, we're right. Um, look, I, I like Delbridge. Yeah, um, I still think he has a you know a bit of value, but uh, to bring to the club, especially if um, if we're going to play Champions League football next year, um, I think it would be a great asset to still have it uh, you know in our in our team. I'm just wondering whether perhaps guys, um, there's a there's a theory in Italy, right? That uh, when a player is um, is out of form, okay, they change positions on him, okay, so they develop him. So if he's a defender and they see if he's got potentially uh, to be a midfielder or a striker, they're changing, okay? And, and they have um, specific coaches that work with them. Would that work if uh, Dalbridge became what we call a jolly? So what, what a jolly does is virtually, if he's required to play in defence, he plays in defence or he can play in the forward line. And from my understanding, Dalbridge used to be a striker back in the States. Is that correct, Josh? He played in the forward line? No, uh, no. He played, he was a centre-back for Minnesota. He was, he was a centre-back for them. But yeah, did he start as a striker at one stage? Oh, he, yeah, in his younger days. And they did chuck him up front for that hot, you know, long ball and then header off the top, the goal classic, you know. Yeah, he did they it did for use him for that. He did it for yeah, Warren yeah. Well. yeah, Minnesota used him for that occasionally, but mostly was a centre-back. And, yeah, in his younger days, he was, yeah, he did play in, up so, top, yeah. So what, what, what I'm, so what I'm thinking there is you've got a player that could play either front or back. So for me, like that's a luxury substitute. So depending on what the scoreline is like, you know, you get a player but like, you know, Harrison, you know, every opportunity to get forward, especially during a corner, right? But you're also the guy that runs back as well and helps out the defense. So if we're playing, we say three across the back, he becomes the fourth player in the back line. But when we're attacking, he becomes that, that central figure next to McLaren. And with the height and strength that he has, I like to think that this guy here might be able to do some damage. Especially in the in the uh, in the penalty area, um, crosses, corners, that sort of thing. I wouldn't get rid of him, to be honest. I really wouldn't, unless there's a superstar that we can, you know, that, that we can. Um, uh, <laughs> well, you know what? If that's the case, right? If Bob was to come back, right? Then by all means, I'll say, look, man, you know, thanks for you know for your time, uh, but we're getting a quality centre back. But I still think the kid's got potential. So unless there's a superstar on its way, I say keep him. So just for everyone watching, that wasn't me saying Bart's coming back. That was just me <laughs> mucking around. Okay. He's not. He's not coming. He's not coming back. I know. No. That. You keep it yeah. serious. We all know like, that. Can What's you just that? keep it? Can you just keep it serious for once in your life? I always keep <laughs> it serious, right? Anyway, so <laughs> we we all think we should keep Harrison for death or as a starting player. Yeah. Um, next person on the list is a foreign Berenger. It was our marquee last year. I now I saw the look on Newman's face when I brought up that name. 
So Newman, straight to you. What's your thoughts? Do we have been, if we were going to get rid of him, do we have someone coming in to replace him? I do not know. Because he performed really well this year. Just don't know if it's Marquee Wagers. I think the person that you should ask this question is young Joshua. Yes. Joshua. Uh, is that going to me now? Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, Florin, right? Yeah. You know, after he moved into his natural position before, you know, was it chucked him out? Well, we won't, we won't go down that road. But, yeah, okay, he was playing in the midfield this time around. He did quite well, but I don't know. He's still a bit inconsistent for my liking. Like, yes, did really well in that derby. We'll never forget that back hill. And um, in the finals, I don't know. I think he was, I don't know. He just wasn't stepping up. I don't know if he was carrying something or whatever, but he just wasn't stepping up. And do we keep him? Do we not keep him? Um, for the cer- c- certain circumstances, and I'm absolutely sure he's on like about, I don't know, 800, 900K. Like, I'll, I'll guess so. Like, I'm not 100% yeah. certain, but I guess so because it's marquee wages, right? Yeah. Um, with how the circumstances is, and will a quality player from overseas come in to Melbourne as a marquee with COVID-19 going around? I don't yeah. think so. So that's why probably keeping Florin is probably the better option than letting him go and um, trying to find someone else. Because I, I don't reckon there's going to be a quality visa player that will come into the league this season. That's just my opinion. But yeah, I'll, I'll probably keep him around as a marquee. Yeah, probably because I don't see, I don't think we can get a good marquee in at the moment. That's just my assessment right there. So, with you saying that he didn't really show himself in the finals, he did come back from a hamstring injury. Yeah, yeah, so that could about. have been the problem he he, he had there. He Godfather, yeah. Look, I I agree with um, young Joshy. Um, yeah, kept putting COVID into the picture too. Not many people would want to travel. And now that we've got him and he's, you know, I reckon just keep him. Yeah. Just keep him for another season, see what happens. Because you never know, next season he'll come back fitter, stronger and could tear it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Our pitches are a lot harder than the than the European pitches. And it takes a while for a player to, to get comfortable with our pitches. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just keep him. Because like Joshy said, I don't believe anybody's going to come back, come to Australia with, with what's going on in the world at the moment. Uh, there could be one, and he has played this year for us. Oh, yeah. Who's that? Sisieta. Yes. He could come back, yes. He could come um, back. We'll, we'll, we'll get on to that a little bit later. Chris, uh, your thoughts, Far? Um, at the moment, I'd say keep him. Because I, I don't see anyone that we could replace him with. Mm-hmm. But I would drop him down to Normal a wages. cap. Yeah. Like could, one quick question. Yes. Uh, how many visa players are we allowed to take to the Asian Cup? Three. So three plus an Asian player. Yeah. 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 So, so we, we have to we, find an Asian player. Yeah, we, that's the criteria. We must have an Asian yeah, and just to add to that, if we have five visas in the A League and one's an Asian player, one player would have to miss out. And you know what happens when a player misses out? They'll get upset for not playing Asian Champions League. Yeah, that's another discussion we'll have like we'll yeah. later. But yeah, yeah, yeah that's but just we don't have point. we we don't have the yeah, yeah. the A League to have five marquee players. Yeah. So yeah. um, so all our Australian based players qualify yeah. as a, a yeah. Asian mar- marquee. So. That could be as well. Um, Jackie Boy, Flyer and Berenger. He's not exactly my favourite player, right? But when he's allowed to actually play in his natural position, um, he has shown in fact he adds a bit of uh, a bit of class to our midfield, which is something that we lack. Um, I agree with every, everybody in the panel. I mean, I don't think anybody want to chance themselves in coming to to Victoria at the moment. Um, so to get rid of him, I think it's virtually, you know, a bad deal for us. Um, uh, but again, I think if we play him as a, as a natural number 10, let him play in the center of the park and not push him into the wings. 
I think we can get the real best out of this guy, which at the moment, how I see it, is he's seen it in drips and drabs. And when, he, and when he's doing that, he's doing it as a number 10 in the middle of the park. Totally agree with that. I reckon we keep him, but again, not not as lucky. Um, we'll, we'll find probably another Australian base uh, market that we can get in. Matthew um, Lucky question mark. That's my question mark. You know, go on, go on. Go on. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so we've done our season wrap. Oh, Lucky Wales, are we keeping him? Yes or no? Real quick. No, I'm getting that new. Is that new kid from Sydney? Me to... I'm not. A, I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay. I'm not. I'm not gonna diss Wales on here. That I'm not gonna diss him. I'm not. I don't want to do that. But yeah, I wouldn't keep him. And like I said, I'm not gonna diss him. I'm not gonna say why. So I don't want to diss yeah. him too much. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. I think I think that Sydney player is coming. But again, I, I'm not. I'm not in the know. So well, yeah. if Lockie could finish and have a better first touch, oh, keep keep, keep him. him. Yeah. But if we're chasing that glory, I think Lockie. He's a good uh, squad filler. Yeah. And I don't think Lockie will win us that title. You know what I mean? He will. He's better he, than he's me. A bench he's, the he, he, he's, he's better than me because he's on the sheet, team sheet and I'm sitting here talking about it. Yeah. But, yeah. He's more no a bench warmer. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Chrissy boy. I said he's more of a bench warmer. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good squad filler. But... To, and, and I don't think, even if he goes to any other clubs, he'd have to improve his first touch and his finish for him to be a starter. Yeah. yeah. You know, even, yeah. even with teams like Central Coast that are struggling, Victory that are struggling, um, all the teams that are, that are struggling this season in the competition, they, they, they yeah, nah, I, don't, I don't see Lockie starting for any other club. You mean? Mm. Mm. Send him down the highway to Geelong. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Jackie boy. Um, look, when he first came to us, I absolutely loved the kid. I think he had the flair, he had uh, he had the showmanship, and I think as you, everybody else is saying, um, he just lacks the finishing power. Um, yeah, I agree. Look, it's time to go, right? But. Wherever he goes, I just want this kid to really live up to his potential. Because at the moment, I reckon we saw a bit of it when he first came to us. But then, like I keep saying, I think, you know, he's been told to, you know, you know, wise up and not do anything, any, any of his trademark tricks out on the field. But um, I believe this kid can do and probably is what he needs to actually, you know, finish probably one of his moves. So good luck to him. Um, and... Yeah, I, I hopefully you know he um, he proves me right in a different club. Yeah, I know it's getting close to Carlton time, but we'll, we'll keep moving. Uh, Chris, uh, uh, like I said, uh, he's a squad filler. Mm-hmm. I agree with Costa. Um, but I think he, he'll end up going down the highway. Just also, um, I found out just by my mother a couple of minutes ago, Mini Jar is not fully leaving C- City. He's only going to MacArthur on a loan. Yes. Yeah. So it's yeah. only a loan, not like Dennis, but it's only a loan for Mini. I think that, that um, move is only for game time. Yeah. And and a lot of the big clubs do it. They're young prospects. They yeah. run them out to bigger clubs, you know, first teams, and they get more yeah. game time. That's all it is. All right. So we're going to quickly talk about the rumours for the people coming in. I'm going to start, and I, I'm sorry, Matt Sutton, the youth goalkeeper for Victory. I don't want him. No. I've seen him play youth league. Don't think he fits our team at all. Is he uh, the one? Is he the one that they used through the through the the, the, the no, that's Matt the COVID? Acton. No, that's but, Matt. Acton. That's Acton, yeah. He Sutton sat on the bench. Okay. Um, so I'm saying no to Matt Sutton. Um, boys? No. 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 I don't know nothing about him, so I can't comment. Jack? Um, no, nothing about him. Being, being Melbourne Victory, definitely not. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Brisbane uh, rules Loney from Barnley, and I don't think he'll get the game time. Adrian O'Neill? 
I say yes, pretty 100%, 100% absolutely solid in his position. He would add yeah. some real, uh, how would you say, like real aggression to the midfield. What is 100%. his position, Josh? Naturally, defensive midfielder. He'll be fantastic. He'll so be fantastic. he'll be there to help I'll Josh. say yes. Yeah, he'll yeah. be there to help Josh. Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm only going by, by what young Josh says, and if young Josh is happy with him, Oh, yeah, oh, look, with, with these players, the only one I know you'll say later on is a little bit of is uh, Marco Tilio. Yeah. But with, with, with these two boys, I, I'm not really following much, so I can't really comment. Uh, Aiden played for Brisbane Raw. Okay. During the season. So that's okay. the only way. We... Oh, they had a good season. I think he came across through the Robbie Fowler trade, didn't he? When yes, he, he, was on, he was on line from Barley. Look, if Robbie Fowler Burnley. 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 He's got experience. He's played EPL, yeah? So he's got experience. Uh, what, one game? The championship. championship. Oh, champ- yeah, championship. Even one championship game, yeah. still quality football. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, why not? Let's bring him on. Do you know Agreed. Bring him on. And uh, Jack Rick? Um, Joshy, just give me a smile if you like the guy. <laughs> Yeah. Is that your, is that your <laughs> biggest <laughs> smile? <laughs> You're laughing. Hundred percent. Bring him in. Hundred percent. I absolutely love this kid. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll go with Josh. Let's Sydney. bring him in, and um, yeah, let's do it. Sydney FC young guy Marco Tilio. I, I reckon bring him in. Bring him in. Well, how old is he? Well, he's he's uh, he played for the soccer. He's under. He's nineteen years old, man. Yeah, and we, lose for the Ak- we lose so. Atkins. We lost Atkinson. We're going to lose probably Wales. You know what I mean? This kid is a star, and I reckon he's um, ready to take on first team opportunities. Human, agreed. Bring him on. Seen him Chris. before a goal. So yeah. yeah, bring him in. Jack, Josh, your thoughts? <laughs> 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 I love him getting my segment first time on it. No, um, <laughs> Mar- yeah, Marco Tilio, yeah, I reckon he was probably the best winger in the youth league. He was probably the best winger in Sydney. They developed the youngsters quite well. And Marco Tilio, I reckon he'll be great, especially for depth, because this, this is why Paddy is going for, you know, more players and a bit more young, that are a bit more younger, right? Because we're going to need the, the depth when it comes to the Asian Champions League, because... For the A-League, Tilio might play, you know, the A-League game and will play our full strength, you know, in the yeah. Asian Champions League. So he'll be great for that. If you had a choice, right, for this player and say Piscopo from, uh, from Auckland. No, uh, uh, from, uh, from winger. Nathan Phoenix. Oh, yeah. Piscopo. Who would you pick? I'd love to get Piscopo. But yeah, I don't see that happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd only, love to get him. Right. Yeah, I, yeah. The only thing that could stop this kid from performing to his to his best, he, he's never played outside of New South Wales. You know what I mean? And moving for him to move to Melbourne, it's a full life change. So yeah. that'll be a yeah. test for him too. You know, because he's played all his football. He played Sydney Olympics, Sydney FC, Sydney FC APL, and, and then Sydney FC this season. He's played three yeah. games for him. So yeah. he's never played anywhere apart from the. The, the under 20 Australian team, he's only played in Sydney. So yeah. coming down to Melbourne might be a bit tough for the first season. I have seen him in the US League squad for Sydney. So I, I agree, bring him in. Now, I'm, I'm going to butcher this guy's name, so I'm going to pass it over to Josh. Josh, the Adelaide guy? Uh, Gomoka. Gomoka. Uh, your thoughts? Yeah. Your thoughts? <laughs> Look, uh, after the race start is when. He, he was getting a go. I'm pretty sure he played majority of the games after the restart. And he was starting over Luis Diorigo. He was probably one of the probably one of the best young players going around during the league. And he was benching him. So, Gamulka, when I watched him, I was like, oh, this kid can play. He's really good. Even against us, he did pretty well. But uh, I'd say bring him in. Like, like the death point I br- brought before with Tilio, 100% bring Gamulka in. I reckon he's a talented defensive midfielder. So, if Josh is saying to bring him in, are you boys saying bring him in? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Josh is our, our player <laughs> review, scout. that man scout. Scout. Yeah. Like the, that's, his, that's his name, the scout. 
Let's get yeah. out. Hell yeah, we've got the, the official <laughs> roll at the Sons of City now, mate. You are the scout. Okay, right. so... I'll take it, I'll take it. Right. So with that, does anyone have anything final to say? No. I'd just like to say to, to Melbourne City, both youth, well, not both, the youth, all the way to our men's, from our, to our females, you made us proud. Um, we, we're going to be back there hopefully soon all together cheering you on. And Riley Dobson, we need you to come back to City. Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, we know that she's getting games at the moment for her team, home team. So she'll be in peak, peak form. Yes. Jack, do you have anything to say? Thank you for a fantastic season. See you next time. Josh? <laughs> just um, just a, I'd say thank you, Eric, for what he did this season. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, Messi, I'm not really good with my French, but yeah, just good luck to him in the future. And, and a massive good luck to Paddy Kisnovo. Hopefully he can prove to all those doubters, I, I want to say those doubters of Melbourne City fans, uh, they have doubts over Paddy Kisnovo. And I hope he proves all them all wrong because I really want Paddy to succeed with this club. So just good luck to him, good luck to the boys, and you know, welcome to the new signings that are hopefully going to come in the next few months. You man, agreed. Thank you to um, Eric for the season, and thanks for getting us to Asia. That's going to be a next challenge for us. Just before we wrap it up, guys, I just got a reminder that the Citizens for Recovery is still going on. We, we are being extended to the end of this month. Okay, guys, so keep those votes coming and uh, donations coming in. I do have a very special announcement. This coming Thursday night at 6 p.m., again, I will be posting it on the Sons of City Facebook page. The Citizens for Recovery podcast is back. I hope you guys have missed this with very special guest, the new head coach of Melbourne City Football Club, the Agley side, Patrick Isnorbe, will be joining us for a chat. So, on behalf of the Godfather, Costa, the Contraurge, Jack, the underboss, Chris, Imagine me, Soldier Daniel, do, and the Scout I Josh, I mean one city centre, Blake Henderson, say hi to you, my boy. Hold you tight, so happy together. If I should call you up, invest a dime, and you say you belong to me, lose my mind. Imagine how the world could be so very fine, so happy together.